So we saw that uh, uh, in Hindustani music we speak of uh, seven Shuddhaswaras and um, five uh, uh, Vikrataswaras and then we have 22 Shrutis. The seven Swaras we know are Sari Gama Padhani. Uh, but these actually are the shortened abbreviations of the actual names of the swaras. These swaras have names, the seven swaras I mean. So, sa is shadja, ri is rishabha, ga is gandhara, ma is madhyama, pa is panchama, dha is dhaivata, ni is nishada. So, these are names and uh, uh, these names have been are, are found in ancient treatises like Naradiya Siksha, which is uh, an early treatise that that is concerned with the phonetics of chanting of the Vedic hymns. So Naradiya Siksha Um, here, even in this treatise, we have the, these names, names of these uh, swaras. And uh, there are some interesting aspects, interesting associations of these swaras. So, sa is supposed to be the associated with the cry of the peacock. Rishabha, the ri is, as some of you would know, Rishabha means the bull. Gandhara is the goat, that is the cry of the goat. Padhyama is the heron. Panchama is the cuckoo bird. Devata is the horse. Nishada is the elephant. Now, these, this is, these are well known associations and as intriguing and enchanting as they are, uh, not really clear what these associations mean. Uh, one thing you can definitely see is that sa, ma and pa, which are really the uh, tonal centers, so to say, uh, of it, uh, for us, uh, they are associated with birds and the others are associated with animals. And, you know, uh, they, you might uh, think of this as just something fanciful or something that is poetic. Um, you see, uh, not only animals and birds, you, the notes, the swaras are also associated with colors, they are associated with rasa. So each, each uh, swara is associated with one color and one rasa or emotion um, and uh, also a deity. So um, what we can uh, really gather from this kind of engagement with the idea of swara is that, you know, swaras are not aloof. They are not something that have nothing to do with the rest of human experience. They are very much part of uh, man in nature. Now, how, how is swara uh, defined in the uh, textual tradition? That's also... Uh, it can be interesting to take a look at it. Now, how would you uh, define a swara? There is any swara. What is swara? How would you define it? Now, if you look at um, Wikipedia, it says that a musical tone is a steady periodic sound. Now, that this is obviously uh, cast in terms of physics, right? Periodic sound and all that. Um, but uh, suppose you were not to draw from the the physics of sound, but simply based on your experience of music, of swaras, how would you define swara? In a sense, swara is sound, right? It is dhwani. But so is my speaking and so is this. That's also dhwani. So how would you, if you had to, uh, how would you define swara? Or not. Um, one of the uh, well known, very well known definitions, definitions you can say of swara is swameva rajate. That is, it is that which 
This is of course Sanskrit. Swameva Rajate. It shines on its own. That is, it is attractive. It is attractive in itself. Some other things, some other kinds of sound might be attractive, you know, but this is a classic uh, Sanskrit example, putras te jatah, your son is born to you. Now that is sound and it is very pleasing, right? But it is not because of the sound itself, it is because of what it means. That is swara, swameva rajate, it, it is uh, pleasing, it, it attracts on its own. Now, see actually the context of this is, uh, it, it's more complex because it draws from the, uh, the swara also means bhaval. You know, swara in Vyanjana, swara means uh, bhaval and there, uh, this is a definition of bhaval, it's swameva rajate, that is uh, a bhaval is independent, right? You can say a, i, u without the help of a consonant. Whereas a consonant, you can't pronounce a consonant without a vowel. So, in that context, swameva rajate, it shines on its own. It, it is expressed on its own. That makes sense. But then it is this, the same definition is applied to swara as a musical uh, entity. And um, we have to uh, try and figure out what it means you know, in this context. But Swami Rajate is, is, uh, is found in the 8th century text Brihaddeshi and is one of the uh, most well known definitions, if you want to call it that, uh, definitions of Swara. Uh, a more elaborate uh, definition by the 10th century brilliant mind. Um, Abhinava Gupta. He, he includes other features such as Anuranana, that is resonance, um, Snigdha, Snigdha is smooth, shiny and Madhura. So this is, um, this is what Abhinava Gupta says and this is just for um, those of you who have an interest in uh, Sanskrit. Uh, the verse goes like this, Vayam tu Shruti sthana bighata prabhava shabda prabhavito anurananatma snigdha madhura shabda eva swara iti vakshyamaha. So it is anurananatma, it is resonant, it is snigdha madhura, it is shiny, smooth and sweet and that is swara according to Abhinav Gupta. And how about Shruti? What is, how is Shruti defined? Shruti is defined as very simply again. Too simply one would say, shuyate iti shruti. It is that which is heard is shruti. Now, this again is uh, a lot of things are heard, but you don't call them all shruti. But again, um, this is again, it goes back to the context of the Vedas. Because the Vedas are supposed to have been heard by the rishis, by the sages. Um, so, that, so, they are heard, therefore they are shruti. So another word for Veda is uh, Shruti and um, in the context of music, in the context of microtones, when you say again that Shruyate iti Shruti, what does that mean? If we go back to the, the observation made in the last video that uh, in the tradition, Shruti is sometimes regarded uh, by, by some uh, Theoreticians, it is regarded as microtones, as pitches themselves, and by others, it is regarded as intervals between uh, very close pitches, the least discernible interval. So, I would say that when you say shruyate the shruti, uh, the shruti as a as a, the least discernible interval makes sense. That you can hear, you can discern that difference, that pitch interval. So. Uh, if Shruti is taken in that sense, then this definition of Shruyate de Shruti uh, makes sense. So, now while we, you know, as I said, we acknowledge, we know that there are 
uh, in physics tells us that there are infinite pitches between any two adjacent swaras. We can't discern all of them. We can discern a few. So the the discern the hearability, the fact that you are able to hear that microtone, that that pitch as you know infinitesimally different from the previous one. That is itself its defining feature. Shruyateti shruti. That which is heard is shruti. Because what is uh, what is heard in performance is swara. Right? It that whatever is heard in uh, in performance attains the status status of swara. We don't say we are singing uh, this shruti or that shruti. We are singing gandhara or or we are singing ga or ma or pa. In a particular shruti of it, definitely. But we we speak of swaras in the context of performance. Shruti is the matrix, as it were, of uh, possible pitches from which some are lit up as swaras. In fact, there is this um, thing. That uh, the swara, the ra means rajr, deepta. The the expression deepta is used even today by many musicians when we say when they say ki wo swara deepta man hai. That that note is lit up. That particular pitch is lit up. So, uh, in that sense, um, what is the exact? Uh, way of shrutis of how exactly uh, can you grasp shruti or even uh, perform them that is a very um, intricate and uh, it, it is something that is learnt in in practice through um, constant exposure and practice and training so there is this uh, lovely verse in the Naradiya Siksha about the elusiveness of Shruti. It says, again it is a Sanskrit verse, Yathapsu charatam margo meenanam na upalabhyate akasheva vihanganam tadvat swaragata shruti. That is just as you cannot really, uh, uh, you cannot really capture the the path of a fish in water or a path of the, the path of a bird in flight in the sky, you can't really trace its way. You can't trace the path. So also you can't trace the path of Shruti. Um, now in, uh, in practice, as I said, we, there are some ragas uh, where we explicitly speak of uh, shruti nuances. So, for instance, um, rag shri or rag marva, they have a komal rishab, komal ri, but it is higher than the the normal uh, ri. Now, how do we actually hit that pitch? It is higher than the normal ri. That is where training comes in. That is where your uh, what is called talim comes in and the, the kind of exposure to good music that you've had. And that's, that's the only way you can capture those shrutis. You see, shrutis uh, confer a fluidity to swara, the, concept, the idea of swara and the music itself. So that though we may describe a raga in terms of its swaras, as we often do. The actual position of that swara is determined and propagated in practice. So, even within the same raga, the same note, same swara, so to say, might have slightly different uh, pitch positioning depending on the phrase. So, this is, this is something that, for instance, cannot be captured on an instrument like the harmonium or the keyboard where you have very fixed keys um, and there is no continuity. But that is the life of 
that's a very life breadth of uh, Indian music. The Shrutis are a nebulous stratum, a matrix of possibilities, parts of which get lit up during Raga presentation. Uh, in an evocative metaphor, uh, Swaras have been compared to ghats in a river. Ghat is, uh, ghats are steps leading uh, down from the banks to the actual waters of the river. Now, the, the steps, the ghats are the swaras and uh, the music is the stream of the river that is, that is lapping against these uh, steps as it goes. Now, obviously the waters don't, uh, you know, hit the steps at exact precise positions, right? They just flow over them and sometimes a particular step it goes over it. Sometimes it may go just a little below that step or sometimes it may go between that step and another step and so on. So that is, swaras are like those steps. Um, and when we perform a raga, that is how we negotiate the swaras. I'll just end with uh, a bit of uh, rag shri. Hare 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 Hey! 